Thank you for having me. Um, first off, I'd like to thank all the partners who helped me build the site. Um, Lincoln Best, he's a smart guy who catches bees with his bare hands. Pretty good. Jenna Cross, who picked all the plant material for the site and designed the bee park beds. And Alexandria Farmer from Mount Royal University, who can hold grade six students from one, great students from one to six, keep their attention outside while teaching them a bee course. Um, and tell my friends at U of C, trying to stay warm. I have a lot of people to thank, and there's a slide at the end of the, at the slideshow that shows all their names. So let's get started. So this is what it ended up with, is a Alberta Native Bee Project. There's me, Jenna Cross, and Lincoln. And not my slides, no. Let me get rid of the tech guy. So this is how it all started. Um, this is a picture that my daughter took in our yard in her bee garden, and we called it a bee-friendly boulevard. So what do we know about bees in Alberta? Do we know how many species there are? Do we know where they occur? And do we know their preferred forage? Um, there's about 400 species, give or take 100. Do we know where they, are, they occur vaguely? And do we know their preferred forage? That's also vaguely. And what did we learn from our bee study? We have an extreme diverse yet nearly unknown bee fauna in Calgary. And what do we need to do? We need to do more projects like this and involve universities to help us study to see what we have. So this is where my project started. This is thanks to Google Earth. This is what the boulevard looked like in 2009. Doesn't look very good. This is what it looks like in 2015. It doesn't look much better. So I picked this as my site to redo the boulevards and to maybe add a bee park on the side of the road. So in the springtime, I went out to the site and I tried to pick a good place to put my bee park because if I plant all the things in the median, people can't go out and study in the median in between cars rushing by. So I needed a place for the study to take place. So I wanted to build a bee park. And this looked like a good place. And it had a really nice view. So I thought I got a good spot. That's Fish Creek Park down there. So when you start a project, you have to do some planning. So in GIS, we have, we can measure down to the inch, all the boulevards. And we decided to put rock beds on the side by the bike path so people could ride their bikes and observe the bees in a safer environment. This is what a rock bed looks like. In Calgary, we're known as a sandstone city, so when we dig in the ground, we pick up sandstone boulders. So we make, put them in a circle, we line it with a liner, we put in topsoil and we have an instant bed. And we don't disturb any ground underneath. This is what my bee park was supposed to look like. It's a flower. So if you Google it from Google Earth, it looks like a flowers because I figured bees like flowers. So that's my design of the bee park. And then down the road, we keep measuring the boulevard and putting places for the rock beds. And you can see on this one slide right here, this is what the flower looks like. So there's the stem and there's all the flower petals, but it looks like I'm missing a few power flower petals because I started playing Be Loves Me, Be Loves Me Not, which wasn't a good thing, but it was fun. But I put in a sand bed and because bees also like to live in the sand, so that's why I didn't put any extra petals in. We needed a place for them to live and to study them. At the city, we're lucky enough to have a group, project management group. They will do a free project management for your project and help you out with the risks and everything. So they did that for free, which was very nice to have. And we came up with uh, stakeholders and issues and opportunities and strengths and threats. And it was all for free, so that helped out a lot. This is the seed mix we use for the boulevard. So we used a seed mix that was native, cell tolerant, and would grow up really nice and look like a, a meadow because it is Canyon Meadows Boulevard. So that's what I thought we'd make the boulevards look like. This is what our flower beds petals are planted with. So if you wanna look at this slide closer later on, you can get all where we put everything. 
we made it low to the middle and high to the outside because bees will go up and then over the road, hopefully, and not get hit by the car. So we had to take all the topsoil out of the boulevards before we planted anything because it wasn't doing very well. So we got the roads crew to go in there and use their equipment and shut down lanes and get the boulevards prepped for us. These are two of my summer students. So when you seed with native seed, you can't put it in a seed spreader because some seeds are really small and some are really big. So if you put it in a seed spreader and start walking, you'll be out in a couple of minutes. So when we seeded the boulevards, we had to seed them by hand and just fill up three buckets and walk side by side. And we also, there's a bag against a tree there that's a product called pen mulch. We use that to seed golf course greens and it uh, keeps the soil moisture and has just a touch of fertilizer in it, not much. You can Google it, it's P-E-N-N -N mulch. And these are the bridge crew that I got to reseed in the fall because you have to seed native seeds at a certain time of year to get the best catch. This is uh, the only picture of me working in the city, I'm told. Um, so I started out with this idea and I just went out there and pounded out the stake where the bee bed should be. And this is how we designed the flower beds, nothing major, just stakes and rope and white paint. Then I hired the guys that did the boulevard to come in and build everything with their equipment because they knew exactly how to do it. So this is a roads crew building. And this is what it almost looked like at the, at the finished product. This is just the start. So then after this, then we planted it. And those are the flowers we put in. We also put a ground cover in amongst these flowers to keep the weeds out so we wouldn't have to do any weeding. We're trying to keep our costs as low as possible. And this is a roads crew helping put rocks around the beds. Um, everything on this site was built with recycled material. The, the, the gravel is recycled sidewalks. The sandstone boulders, when we dig up a road, we stockpile them and that's where we get those from. And everything else on the site is built with recycled material. And that's a proud road crew after they finished doing anything. They couldn't believe they got a chance to work on something like this because this is the sidewalk crew, construction crew. And for them to come out and build a bee park, they thought it was the coolest thing ever. And this is our other crew. They have lots of wood in their yard. So we used leftover wood to make our information sign in the middle of the bee park. So when you went into the middle, you could see what it was all about. So in the information booth, this is a log that we made. And you can lift this part of the log right here. And you can see the bees working inside. So when you put up a sign, just don't put up a sign, make it a living sign. So this is what it looked like right after we finished most of the things. We haven't have, don't have our sign up yet on the information in the middle. Then we put out some bee houses. This is Gary, one of our staff that was building the other things. So we put out bee houses so we'd see what we catch. And this is what the bee house looks like. And this was provided by Lincoln Best. So this is Lincoln on the right and that's Mary. This is St. Mary's University. We went in at the end of the year to see what we had living in our bee houses. And this is what we had living in one of them. So native bees are smart. I don't know if you can see my mouse here, but they plant the females, they, they lay eggs and they put the females first and then they put the males second and then they sort of close the door. So if an invader comes in and eat the males, well, it's no big loss. And the males also hatch first. So if you put the males down at the end, they would eat their way out and there would be no females left. So nature has a way of figuring out how to protect itself. Um, we found out that a local golf course, Earl Gray was getting rid of all their trees. They had to move their fairways over because they were installing a pathway. So instead of putting the logs in the dump site, we said we'd come and get them. So this is Monday, we found out they were taking down the logs and they started. This is Tuesday, they stockpiled the logs for us. 
And Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, we spread the logs out for the entire distance from McLeod Trail to Acadia Drive. And we drilled holes in them for bee habitat. It's a better use of sending the logs to the dump. And these two lucky guys got to drill all the holes and all the logs. They have generators in their wheelbarrows. And here's a picture of a log with holes drilled in it. This is Lincoln Best. This is a picture of him catching a bee with his bare hands. So when I started this project, I didn't know anything about bees. So I Googled Bee University and my daughter and my wife said, do bees go to university? And I was kind of stumped, but I think the smart ones. Lincoln also did a collection of our site. He has a five year study on our site. And after he IDs all the bees, he puts them in the U of C entomology lab. And these are some of the bees that we found on our site. So I went to the local schools, the nearby schools, and I asked for kids to come and help me. And I went to one school a couple years ago when I got 12 kids. So I figured I got this, I can do this all on my own. But then they started sending more kids. And then more kids showed up. I had to get some extra help. You can see this is Rhodes Creek. We are planting milkweed for monarch butterflies. We had 600 plants and 300 students showed up. So here we are planting in our rock bed. This is Alexandria Farmer. We gave the kids a class outside about native bees on the side of the road because it was a field day for them. And after they planted, they learned all about native, native bees. And this is Jenna Cross giving a talk about all the plants she put in there and why she picked the native plants she did. And then in the fall, Lincoln and I went back to the schools that helped us plant and Lincoln gave them more information on native bees. Then we took our show on the road. We went to the, um, this is the Calgary Horticulture Center and Lincoln and Jenna, we gave a talk on what we were doing because they were getting a lot of calls in to the horticulture center, but nobody could provide any answers. This is Sam. Um, I gave him the plans to build the site. And if you give this guy plans for anything, he'll build it as fast as possible, even before you have a chance to see what he's been up to. He's, he was a great asset for this project. Those were his crews digging out the boulevards and his crews building up the flower beds. So this is our information sign at the start of the project. It tells you what to look for. Um, it has partners at the bottom. It's endorsed by BCD Canada, which is this site. Um, David Chizuki Foundation, Mount Royal University, University of Calgary. And there's also a cool bumblebeewatch.org at the bottom and that's Lincoln's sign at the bottom there. This is our information signed by the B log that we have. So it tells you what to look for when you open up the door of the log. And this is what you can see living in there and it gives you some more information. This is the B bed. This is a sign by our, our sand bed. And this tells you what to look for and not why you shouldn't step in it and things, but this is also one of our signs. We do have a sign shop here, so it's easy for us to make signs. So this is what the bee park looks like from the bike path in the side of the road. So there's our rock at the front, and that's our information sign. And that's what our park looks like from the pathway. This is what it looks like inside the pathway. So that information booth was all built with recycled material. This is all recycled asphalt and the sandstone boulders. It's the cost of delivering them. And these are our flower petals with our ground cover coming up first. This is our information sign. So like 
I said, when you put up a sign, make it a information living sign. Just don't put up a sign to have a sign there. Make it a functional sign. So this is our log right here and you can lift it up and see what you're supposed to be looking for and what you might see. This is just more pictures of our little bee park that we put in. This is after the ground cover is starting to flower out and our other plants are starting to come through. We planted, so we'd have plants all year long, early spring, middle spring, late spring, early summer, late summer. You get the idea. This is some of our plants coming in after our ground cover. This is a bee that we found on site. Um, it's an endangered bee endangered bee. This is what it is, a gypsy cuckoo bumblebee. And we found two on our site. This was sent to me by Sid who works for the government. And this is a map of where it was, um, where it is now and where we've probably lost it. These are some of the bees that we took, university took pictures of on our site. So these are bees on our flowers. That one's just full of pollen. So there's all types of native bees and the only, some native bees only go to certain flowers. So you have to know what to plant to, to attract which bee. And all these pictures were taken by Michael Gavin with a very high tech camera from the university. So with our bee study, I thought if I included the universities into my little project, it would get more attention and it would be a more real um, study, I guess you would call it. So if you didn't have the, the backing of, of the universities, then it's just Dave building a park in the middle of nowhere. So what did our bee study find? We found out where they live, when they're active, what kinds of bees we have, and also what kind of flowers they like. So how can we use our new knowledge that we found? We can make better bee habitat in the city. We can make more places for them to nest and more flowers that they like. So if we plant them, they will come. So we learned where the bees live. They live in the ground. They live in cavities, holes in trees, in stems and branches. That's actually a picture in our little sandbox. So we learn where they live. We learn what flowers they like. And what's a bee presentation with a lot of cool pictures of native bees, different ones. These are thanks to Lincoln Ben. They're all different kinds. That's a female because you can see this finger. There's some crazy looking ones. <laughs> some are built for speed. <laughs> and they all come in different sizes. I know the one on the top is a fairy bee. The other one's just a big bee. But that's the different sizes they all come in. So if you do a project in Calgary, these are the people that I would contact because they're the bee experts. So when I Googled Bee University, I found out that bees do go to school, but also I found Lincoln Best and I found Shelley and I found Mindy Summers 
and Paul Galprin and Bev Sandlack and Megan Evans, Chris Manderson, Sarah Johnson, Dave Heyman, Alexandria Farmer, and Jenna Cross. So I was lucky enough to find all these people just by starting this project. Because when I started, I had an idea to build it in a different location. And that location, of course, got widened as the road got widened. So that I lost that one, but I thought this one would be a perfect place for it. And I found, I met all these people just by starting this project. So if you do one in Calgary or anywhere, contact any of these people and they'll steer you in the right direction. And these web pages are really good to look at too. Um, B Canada supplied the first one. And the second one is written by a professor in Ontario. And when I started this project, you saw me standing out there with just a stake and some rope. But as soon as I started doing that, um, these are the people from the city who got involved and helped out. So it's quite a few people that also helped out with this project. And it wasn't just me that was doing it. And that's my presentation. It's a little quicker than an hour, but that's the end of it. That is uh, quite a story, David. Uh, thank you uh, for sharing that with us. Um, I'm, I'm wondering if anyone, well, if anyone has questions, feel free to unmute yourself and uh, ask, or if you prefer to use the little chat box and just type in your question, you can do that. Um, but let me start and um, uh, ask you a question, David. Um, so what has the response been like from the city? Like, uh, that's quite, quite an endeavor that you, you started and all those people involved with it and those incredible bee photos. Um, what's, what's it been like? Um, it's been really good. Um, I'm, I work in an area where they trust me with 14, just about 1400 hectares of land. Um, so basically with climate change and everything, we're trying to get away from planting something that needs a lot of water and a lot of fertilizer. So native plants makes the most sense. Mm -hmm. And it also what I call is a functional landscape. It actually does something other than try to survive. Um, up to date, we've been planting non-functional landscaping where our best hope is that it survives where we plant it and usually doesn't because we put salt down and there's um, different environmental factors that might not be conducive to those plants growing. But if we put native plant material down, at least it will survive our climate in our area. So that's, that's a way to go on that. Um, it's been a little slower than I would like it to go. But we are going in the right direction now because uh, somebody brought it up in council the other day and even mentioned our little gypsy cuckoo bee that we found. And I think um, Parks is going to lead this into the future and we'll have more, more bee parks with more thought put into the landscaping. Thanks. So there is a question, but uh, before I get to that, just want to ask you about this cuckoo bee that was found. So is this is an endangered species? Yeah, it's been in, on the endangered species list since 2014. And the map picture I showed you has it almost all gone from Eastern Canada. They haven't found it for a while. And due to some other people like Alexandria Farmer, they found a couple more species up in Northern Alberta. So the more we study and make projects like this and involve universities, we can find out exactly what we do have and enhance the landscape so they have a better chance of survival. And so because the bee is endangered, is there any special legislation or something that will happen as a result for the land that you're, you're using? We're currently looking into that. We have parks and law with the City of Calgary looking into it. We also have people from the Government of Canada and the University of Canada or University of, Al of Calgary I'm looking in to see what we have to do. And the main thing it looks like we have to do is plant more material for the hosts of this bee. This being a cuckoo bee, it doesn't uh, forage for itself. Um, in native bees, there's a, the bee that does all the work and lays their egg into a pollen sac. And as soon as they leave the nest, a, a cuckoo bee comes in and lays their egg in the same pollen sac. So they don't have to do all the work of raising their young and this is what that is. So if we, ha we have to plant 
plant material for its host. Mm -hmm. And the gypsy bee lives off its host. So I would say there's more than one endangered bee species, bee species with the gypsy queen, but we have to plant flowers that help them the most. Great, thanks David. So um, there are some questions here. So uh, Tanya, uh, her question is, can we get a copy of which bees like which flowers? Yes, um, Lincoln Best is working on that. He's gonna bring out a paper and he'll ha also have a website out soon where the public can go to that website and get all the information they need from the experts in this field. So maybe what we could do when we send out the recording to everyone, if you could give me the link to Lincoln's uh, website, then I can share that with everyone. Yeah, we're trying to find a place for it on the city webpage too. So if somebody has a question about native bees or honeybees, they can click on it and get all the information they need. Okay, great. And we'll direct them to Lincoln's site. Perfect. Um, so Elena has a question too. She says, thank you for a very interesting presentation, David. Do you irrigate your flower beds? Uh, we watered them when they first went in, but no, everything is supposed to be native, so it just has to survive. All right, and uh, a question from Catherine. She says, uh, I missed the beginning of the presentation, so how long did it take from start to finish for the installation? Of this project? Um, once I got to go ahead, I had to get it done as fast as possible before anybody said no. So it took us one season, like one year, right from in the spring when you saw the snow to me pounding in the stake until the end pictures. Those pictures were the following spring, of course, but that's, it took one year to do. The, the boulevard section is 0.6 hectares, so we took out 0.6 hectares of about four inches of topsoil and added new stuff and then seeded that. And the bee park is just, it's just the size it is. Right. So let me ask you a question um, going back. Uh, I, I saw that you, you, know, you had people seed you know, by hand the boulevard. Um, just wondering how successful that was, that hand seeding. Um, it, it came in really good because you could spread the seed out exactly. You measure out the rate that you're putting down and the length of the boulevard. So you could measure out seed for each single boulevard so you'd know exactly how much to put down so you wouldn't run out in the first three feet. Hmm. Okay, so I've got another question here. So a bit off topic, she says, this is Susan uh, Blaney. Uh, but have you been able to change your roadside management policies within your city to be more pollinator friendly? That's what the step we are at right now. We're working on it. We had to uh, kind of prove that this was the way to go. And by including the university and finding an endangered bee species, I don't think we can not do this moving forward. So perhaps in the future, Calgary might consider becoming a bee city? <laughs> um, there's a good story behind that. I could tell you off on the side, but hopefully <laughs> we do become a bee city because all the schools that helped us out and all the students that helped us out, like to have 300 kids come, I was expecting 12, um, to be interested in bees and native bees and helping them, um, the kids could lead us into a, being a bee city if the adults don't. Right. Um, okay, another question, question from Lauren um, Whitmer. He says, do you have to educate your department's management and or politicians about pollinators to get them on board and support the project? Or did you, yeah, did you have to educate them? Um, some are already educated. Some um, rely on the information we send them. So moving forward, you have to, you have to show the project is works and, and it's good for the environment and it's good for the Calgary, the Calgarians that live here. Um, it's good for everybody. So it's hard to argue something that's good for everybody. Yeah. Good point. Um, so Susan has another question. She says, how successful were the logs as bee nests? Um, it's hard to tell because you'd have to cut the log apart to see, we do have sizes that we recommend using more than others. You have to go in about six to eight inches, make sure it's very clean, put it on an angle, face the south. Um, there's a lot of things that go into, you just don't drill holes in the log and hope it works. So um, we did everything that we were instructed to, to do from the bee experts and uh, 
I guess we'll go out there in the spring and just watch to see if bees are going in and out of the logs would be our best, right. best thing to do. Um, Akash Goyle, he's got um, something to share with everyone. He says a very good paper I, I find in Journal of Pollination Ecology. So he's got that information. So I'll forward that to everyone for plants and pollinator habitat enhancement in northern prairies. Um, so for your, your, your region. Um, okay, so here's a question from Susan. What was the source of your seed mix? Ooh, you'd have to ask Jenna Cross. She has, um, she is a parks biologist and she works for the city of Calgary and she works for parks and she has a supplier that's just outside of town that grows specifically for, mostly for her. And um, he has all the ag equipment that used to be for farm seed. He rigged it for native seed. So she gets native seed right growing right from Alberta. Yeah, and the, pl the plugs that we used in the flower beds, like we planted plugs because we wanted more instant. And we got that from uh, Alan Pat Fedekenhoor that live in Calgary that have a company for native plants. And so was anyone, I'm just wondering about, I know you planted for monarchs, um, milkweed. Um, did, you, did you see any monarchs come into your region? Um, I was off most of the summer, so I didn't really get a chance to go out there and take a good look. But um, the more you plant for pollinators, the better chance you'll have getting them. Mm -hmm. And do you have any plans for this coming year for the area? that you were working on? Well, hopefully we'll have a grand opening with the uh, alderman and the mayor. That was something we wanted to do to do before. Um, also, uh, Parks, Chris Manderson is looking into doing this more in the city. So he's our environmental guy with Parks and the environmental guy with Roads. Uh, Ethan Askey is also looking into doing this more and looking for funding so we can grow this. This project was entirely taken out of our, our maintenance budget. Wow. Um, so did you ever imagine that uh, <laughs> it would happen <laughs> and that you'd have such success? <laughs> well, I was standing out there quite a bit by myself for most when I was building it and people would come and go and do some work. I thought it was crazy when I was building it, you know, building a flower you can see from Google Earth and that kind of stuff. But uh, it's got quite a bit of attention and it got me to meet people like you. So <laughs> I can't complain. Oh, uh, that's, that's great. And so um, are there other projects going to happen this summer in, in, our, in spring in Calgary, the similar to what you've done? Um, I can't really answer that for sure. Um, if a community or... Um, Somebody wants a traffic circle redone or something like that. We could put it in pollinator friendly plants so we don't have to water it and spray it. I, we have a budget for that, but I don't like using it. I'd rather put something in where you just have to hand the weeds every once in a like handful of weeds instead of spraying. Um, communities can lead this. Um, there's a couple, about five communities that want to become bee communities, I think. Um, there's a bunch of schools that want to be B schools. I think the University of Calgary is looking into becoming a B university. So there's there's been a lot of attention around the outside of this project. But for the city to lead it, I think they're just, well, they're starting now, I hope. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, you know, Chestermere is a B city and Airdrie as well. So um, I'm hoping to share what you're doing with, uh, with them because I guess, you know, every city's got this type of land and they could, they could just copy what you've done. Well, that'd be nice. <laughs> okay, so I have a question here from April. She says, uh, how did you educate the children about bees and what kind of activities uh, did you do with them? Well, what we did with them, we, uh, I just basically went to all the surrounding schools and said what we were doing. And every school I walked into, they sort of said, hey, look, it's Madison's dad. <laughs> um, they all knew me from my daughter taking dance. So they, what are you doing here? And I said, well, I'm doing a bee project. And I was wondering if your students would like to learn about native bees because we're building a, a bee park. And if they wouldn't mind helping, that would be great. Again, I was expecting... 12 kids, but at every school I went to, it was like, hey, look, it's Madison's dad. The principals all knew me, um, so they just 
Oh, they is out with us. Um, we planted. We told them what we were planting. We gave them a class outside with the university, and with uh, Jenna giving them talks about native plants. And uh, sorry, sorry, just got interrupted there. Um, about native plants, and then we went back in the fall, and Lincoln told them how native bees live and their life cycle and all that kind of thing. And then with the city of Calgary, they have a mayor's eco leadership program. So we presented this to the future students um, for the eco leaders program and they take it back to their school and they try to implement a program. And then at our mayor's environmental expo, they come back and they present to all the other schools on what projects they did and how successful they were. So there's a lot of student activity out there. Um, we're trying to generate as much as we can with this project, and it seems like we're being successful. Well, that's quite a, an incredible uh, project. Uh, I hope all of the people that are, are here joining us today, um, I'm sure they're just as impressed as I am with what, with what you were able to do and accomplish. And uh, congratulations, David on uh, what you're what you're able to do and we look forward to hearing more great stories coming out of calgary <laughs> um, yeah so are there any more questions anyone want to unmute perhaps hear your voice ask a question maybe if there's anyone here from some cities that might want to just sort of share what you're doing or anything that's going on in your cities if there's anybody out there Uh, let's see. Okay. Maybe, maybe we'll get Susan. Could you, would you want to sort of share what's going on, Kawartha? Um, hi. <laughs> I already put you on the spot. <laughs> okay. Well, the things are, we have things definitely percolating. Um, I, I guess I would, like to share that uh, I had a very positive um, response from our parks department about being a bee city. Um, it's interesting, we're, we're a much smaller city, David. We, uh, we're a city that is actually a county. So we're struggling with being very rural, but, you know, have, and, but also having, you know, Lindsay, um, a population of about 23,000 people um, but pretty much um, it's we're a huge area um, so we have this one town has has parks in it and they uh, I, w I was very delighted to find out that they have a horticulturalist who is a bee um, a bee lover <laughs> and she has been secretly planting bee friendly plants all over the city for quite a long time so that was very heartening to find out. Um, they they actually have the money they feel to put in a pollinator gardener do do the kind of project that this is. But they've assured me that they will use um, they continue to use bee friendly plants, shrubs, and trees. And we now have a partnership with our uh, local um, college, which is Fleming College Frost Campus, which is an eco um, management. You know, um, place so it's it's very ecologically um, there. That's what their bent is. They have a, a huge greenhouse, and they've agreed to plant to grow the, our um, the top five um, pollinator friendly plants for the city in the greenhouse. So there's our relationship with that's coming along, um, and I, I'm very pleased that that we were able to make this one step. I, I can't tell you what the five top plants that our horticulturalist wanted. She hasn't told me that they, they're going to plant them. Um, I also have a relationship with the Kawartha Conservation Authority, and we planted two pollinator patches similar to what you've done in your uh, pollinator flower garden. Um, that, and we, we've involved the pollinator partnership and um, that's going to involve school children and signage, and, and um, I'm, I'm hoping to grow that into um, pollinator patches on a court of conservation property because they they've got um, they seem to have more resources than the city does. Mm -hmm. So that's 
that's my report. Thank you, Susan. That's uh, very impressive. That's a great story. Um, Catherine has something she's just um, written. Uh, she says, I adopted a traffic gate in my neighborhood, planting a pollinator-friendly native plants, inviting neighbors to help out. Um, I'm not sure. Maybe you could just share with us where that might be. Um, I don't know if you're from Canada, United States. I think we have some Americans uh, with us. I mean, you know, we're we're without borders anyway around here. <laughs> um, so, um, and does someone else want to share what they're doing? Maybe Sherry, I don't want to put you on the spot, but you're from Brandon, Manitoba, and maybe you could tell us what's going on there. Um, maybe you're, maybe that's, maybe that's not a good idea. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, who else can I put on the spot? How about Lauren? How can I put you on the spot, Lauren? <laughs> Sure, Shelley, you can put me on the spot. <laughs> so it's Lauren Widmer. I live in the city of Guelph, and we became a bee city in September. Uh, Guelph has had a long history of doing stuff regarding pollinator, pollinators uh, through the University of Guelph, and in our community, we have an organization called Pollination Guelph, which has been undertaking a number of projects. Uh, we have had a fairly good relationship with the city. Um, uh, supporting some of our projects, providing staff time, uh, not, fairly modest ones. I wouldn't say quite on the scale as the one that David showed. Uh, but one of our signature uh, projects has been uh, restoring a, um, a former landfill to a pollinator meadow. Uh, it's called the ECU Landfill. And so we've been working with uh, the city on this for some years now. Uh, we actually had to raise the money for that. They provided the land, um, but in terms of the funds to uh, prep the site and plant um, and maintain it, uh, we've been the ones who had to come up with the money for that. Um, the city's also helped us in smaller projects and like parks along Trans Canada Trail and at Emergency Services Center, they provided the land. Again, we got most of the, the funding for that, although the city has stepped up and, and paid for ongoing maintenance of it. So I think by and large, we've had a pretty good relationship with the city of Guelph. We'd like to grow that even more. Um, there seems to be interest at the political level. Uh, there was unanimous support for us becoming a B city, so that was encouraging. Um, so we, we just keep looking to, you know, make, to go a little bit further. Uh, we have a symposium coming up, um, an annual symposium, pollinator symposium coming up on, um, March the 9th. Um, it's, we're, so we're looking forward to that as a, a vehicle for people to exchange ideas. Uh, we, we're expecting about 145 people all together and we'll be talking about bee cities, um, and native plants and a number of other topics. So, so yeah, that's Guelph. I think we're pretty active and good support so far from the city, something we hope to build on. Thank you, Lauren. Thanks for sharing that. Um, so we found out that the traffic gate uh, is also in Calgary, and she said that's how uh, she met David. So uh, someone else to, uh, I guess, add to the list of, of great supporters of um, helping pollinators. So Sherry uh, Punek uh, Murphy from Brandon, she says, sorry, I couldn't get my microphone on. Brandon is just getting ready for our educational campaign for the next bee season. Um, and I, I really think um, uh, my experience as well, I mean, just hearing about those kids and 300 kids wanting to plant, uh, it, it, it's, it's really inspiring to go to schools, to reach out to kids and see what they're, uh, what they're doing. Um, and maybe I'll, I'll uh, let's see, maybe I can put Lorraine on the spot too, and maybe she could just share with us, you know, what's going on in Stratford. Hi. Yes, in Stratford, we, we didn't have a pollinator working group, so we now have one. And I found this really inspirational because I used to, I, I was an educator, so I used to work in schools. And yesterday, uh, myself and another member of the team, we were invited to a, a school because one of our board members has asked if we could have a uh, youth on the B-City Board of Directors. Uh, so I thought, well, that's a really good idea. So I went to school expecting, not expecting anything because I didn't, I, I'm not originally from this city. So, and I worked in a different place. 
Uh, so um, there were 16 students, and they were from grade seven and eight, and they were all so enthusiastic that I, I left there feeling 20 years younger and re-energized, and they want to, us to meet with them again. They want to brainstorm. They want to have, they want to teach about pollinators to everyone. It was fabulous. If you can get those kids, if you, the future is for them. I mean, we're doing this for them. And that's why we're so passionate for, about B City and, and getting, uh, saving the environment for the future generations. So I'm re energized. So, <laughs> yeah, what Stratford's going to do a lot. <laughs> Thanks, Lorraine. Um, I was just actually in, in Ottawa. I just came back and, uh, and I, I think similar experience there. They're, uh, they're getting ready to um, present to their city council. And um, we have Julianne actually from Ottawa. I don't know if you want to say something about what's going on in Ottawa. <laughs> Hi. Um, I just wanted to say first what an interesting presentation it was. It was so inspiring. Um, yes, we're hoping to become a bee city. Part of our discussion here, and this, this perhaps, and I don't have all the answers I'm learning as I go here, but part of the discussion is trying to sort out are honeybees from our native bees. And I, I'm trying to collect some letters of support right now. Um, and I had an interesting email from one individual who's very influential, who, who basically um, would really um, like to see Ottawa become a pollinator city, but queries that idea of Ottawa being a bee city because he's concerned about um, uh, honeybees mingling with the native bees. So anyway, that's sort of where we're at in our discussion. Great. Um, thanks, Julianne. And yeah, good luck. So you're, you're, you're meeting it with the Environmental Committee, I guess, in, in April? Is that? Uh... Yes, yes. In mid-April, we're hoping to meet with the Environmental Committee and um, they have just expanded their terms of reference to um, acknowledge that the city does have a role in protecting our pollinators. Uh, mm -hmm. And if the Bee City proposal passes, then it will go on to um, a city council for approval. So we've still got a few steps to go and I'm not quite sure how it's going to resolve, but um, it's really good to have this conversation. Oh good, well thanks for sharing. Um, and is there anyone else there that would like to share? Um, not sure where uh, some other people are from. Uh, if I've missed someone, I apologize. But if you'd like to say a few words, please feel free to unmike and share. <laughs> okay. Um, all right. Well, with that, um, uh, I think I, I can't thank you enough, David, and all of you who shared with us. Um, it, it really inspires me, and I think it inspires all of us when we hear what we're all doing. And, uh, and the progress, I'd say, that we're, we're all making to wake people up to the importance of pollinators and what we can do to protect them. And then look at David's story, how they find this um, uh, endangered endangered bee and and I think David you, you got emails from just about every bee researcher around the world didn't you or yeah I wasn't uh, I wasn't shy promoting what we were doing um, I think we're better together than we are apart so if we can all work together to try to keep the pollinators around and to encourage more species not to be endangered I think we're doing a good thing well, I think that's a good place to end. Thank you so much, David, um, Thank you for, for having the incredible you. presentation and what you're doing. And uh, yeah, okay, everyone, thanks for joining us. Um, there's another talk, I don't have the date, but it's Lincoln Best. David was talking about him. He's an expert on native bees. Um, and he's, uh, he lives in Calgary and has a lot of incredible stories to share with us. So I hope you'll all join us for the next talk. And I think you'll see all the great things that are coming up as well for us. Okay. With that, I will just say goodbye. Have a wonderful day, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.